I'm not very uh, technical in the IT part, but mostly in the locksmithing part or in the mechanical uh, security, because I believe, and I hope you, you, you think the same uh, at least, that the uh, physical security can give you a better access of IT security. If I can go directly to the server, server room, I can directly take a hard drive or plug a keylogger or maybe just a USB with malware or something and get more information than I could do uh, through internet, through the firewall and everything. So just to speak a little about me, um, so I'm Alexander. Uh, I play with locks. Uh, I've been playing with locks maybe with for, for 10 years. And now I have a company uh, specialized in trainings for locksmiths and police and uh, law enforcement uh, agencies uh, for opening locks. Uh, it could be just, uh, in a destructive way or non-destructive way. Um, and uh, I run a few websites about lock picking. Uh, Locksport is a, a forum, so you can speak with other uh, hobbyists in lock picking or locksmiths. So why do we speak about uh, physical security or locksmithing in uh, IT uh, conference? My point is that, as I said, uh, if you have a lot of password, a lot of cryptography and everything uh, on your computer, on your server, on everything, if I can just walk in and do my job, I can get any information I want. I can place bugs, I can place camera, I can place keylogger and everything. And I feel that IT people, uh, in some way, I, I, I think I am IT, an IT guy in the way that I can help people to, procte to protect sorry, uh, the IT knowledge and IT um, information, IT data that you, you can have. But most people think only or almost only about uh, electronic and computer and they don't think enough about physical security. And now, why would anyone use NDE technique? NDE is non-destructive entry technique. Uh, why you cannot just use a crowbar or maybe a, a plier or what's the name in English? A bolt cutter. Uh, you can do that, but you can do that only if you are a burglar. But here you are not here to protect yourself against uh, burglary, I think. You are more here to protect your data against a competitor, maybe, or against a corporate spy or maybe government spy. Uh, if you have a very good knowledge, you, you have to protect it. And this kind of people, uh, competitors, spies, who wh whatever kind of spy it can be, they want to not leave any trace because they want to be able to come in, to take information, to come out, and you won't notice it maybe for one month, two months, and they can just release the information they, they created thanks to the data they, they stole from you. Uh, and if you make a, a working key for a place, you can go there one day, take the information, you go out, and one week later you come back again, and one week later you come back again, and you can come maybe for 10 years in the same place, and you are never noticed, and you just steal all the information. Uh, I don't know what you think about lockpicking exactly, but usually people say that lockpicking does not leave any trace. And sometimes uh, if, you are, uh, if, if you are burglared in your place or in your company, if you see the, pawn, the, the door has been opened uh, with no trace, you will say maybe I left the door open. Or even if you think that someone did lockpicking, you will just say, ah, we cannot prove that lock picking has been made, so I will just take a drill and make a hole in my lock and call the insurance company and say, hey, you see, there is a hole in my lock. Uh, someone uh, burglared me. But the point of this conference is to talk about the traces that can be uh, found uh, when lock picking has occurred. So we'll see how a key works, uh, maybe not all of you uh, are aware of how a lock works and how a key works uh, in a lock. We will see different and very common uh, opening techniques because it's not only like lock picking in the movies, you have some other techniques. We will see how we can analyze the locks with uh, a microscope, for example. There are several ways, but this is one of the, the good ways to do so. 
And this will show you that you can detect these techniques. But we'll also talk about anti-forensic because not every technique can be found or there is some ways to, to make them difficult to, to find even with a microscope, even with a, a good knowledge of the locks. And after that, you will see the countermeasure to, to protect against these anti-forensic techniques. So you can be sure that nobody can enter your place so you don't know it. So this is how a lock works. So this one has been cut, uh, uh, obviously. And you can see that there is two pins. So one key pin, it should touch the key. Uh, in there, of course, there is no key. It has, in, it has been picked, sorry. And you have a driver pin pushed by a spring. You need to have this pin exactly at the shear line between the plug and the shell. So of course, this is a one pin lock. Usually a lock has at least five pins. So all the pins must be at the shear line. If you have a wrong a key, even if it's wrong only in one place, it won't open. It will not be almost open. It, it is just closed. So when you pick a lock, you want to align all those, all those shear line to the shear line between the core and the shell. So this is very basic mechanics. And this is why sometimes you can pick it quite easily. You just have to reproduce the shape of the key somehow, so it can be all the key at the same time, or maybe with vibration or with picking, you can obtain the right combination. It's similar to brute force, or it's more close to uh, fusing, uh, technically. So now we'll see what the burglars or the spies can use to open the lock. So this is when I will need the volunteers, please. So. We will start with lock picking. Uh, so, if you can try to pick this lock, for this lock, you will try to open it with an uh, electro pick. You know this? No. Okay. So, I will, I will show you. Uh, actually, this is just. <laughs> Uh, a pick that will um, snap on the pins, and we'll try to to obtain. Um, how do you say that? Uh, it will make a separation between the top pin and uh, the bottom pin. I, I won't go too much in the detail because uh, the conference would uh, be like three hours. I want to speak about the forensic, but just try it in inside the lock. So you need to tension the lock. So with this tool, you just try to turn it, and in the same time, you want to uh, hit the pins, okay? Another technique is the use of a bump key. You know this? Okay. So it's okay. You, you, you don't have to open the lock. This is not what we are trying to, to do. We are just here to, to look for techniques and, and forensic. And the last technique will be... Oh, and the locks were brand new. I saw him open the package. Yeah, they are brand new, so there is no other marks, which, which is better for training. Uh, we could speak about used locks, but it's more complicated. So for the first time, for the first talk I do here, I prefer to do with new, new, tool, new lock. Uh, <laughs> it's the, the audience participation part. This is going to look great on the video. Now we need to make music. Be rhythmic. Be rhythmic. Let's make a nice, a nice song while we're picking the locks. So I, I will continue to speak a little while they are trying to open the locks. So they are not very easy locks, so that's why they, they don't open them uh, very, very easily. It's just regular locks that you can find in hardware store or in groceries, and etc. So 
The first technique is basic lock picking. So I believe that most of you already heard about lock picking. You probably saw some movies uh, where they do lock picking. Another technique which is very very common uh, since 2006, uh, there, there has been a paper about this technique, and from 2006, a lot of people tried and used uh, bumping. Bumping is a technique with special uh, cut keys. You can see that they are keys, but with a quite special uh, shape. And you have to hit the key inside the lock. So this is what he did, actually. Thank you. So this key is actually not the official key of the lock. You can see that I can take it away while it is still picked. I don't know if everyone can see it, but you can see that I'm moving a part which is not supposed to move without the proper key. So, very nice, thank you very much. I will an analyze this lock uh, afterwards. Um, so, perfect timing. I was talking about uh, lock pick, about bumping. No, this is his time to open it. So, uh, mechanical pick gun and electro pick gun, they use uh, a technique which is uh, the fact of eating the pins. This is like the Newton uh, pendula. I don't know in English how you say that, but okay, very good, perfect. You can applaud him. It's, it's very good. <laughs> they, they, they are doing the hard job. I'm just talking, and they are doing the job. This is very good. Um, so this technique uses the same uh, principles as uh, Newton pendula. Uh, when you leave one ball, all the force of this ball is transferred inside all the, the ball bearings and only the last one is pushed. When you hit, uh, would it be with a key or with an electro pig gun or mechanical pig gun, you do the same. You are like the first ball bearing and all the energy you give inside is transferred towards or through, sorry, through this pin and only this pin is pushed so for a few milliseconds, you have a gap between the top pin and the bottom pin. And at this time, you can turn. It's very hard to find the, the right uh, time. That's why it's not that easy just to put it inside and you open. But as you can see, it can be done. So come back to my techniques and electropic. The last technique, uh, we won't do it right there because it takes uh, a few minutes to, to be done. But I can show you uh, a video. It's called impressioning. So impressioning is my favorite technique. It's actually a technique where you take a blank key. So this key is totally blank. You can see there is no cut on it. And you will make directly on the lock a working key. So I, I won't show you the whole video because it's five minutes and there is no point to, to see the whole video. But you can see that just by moving it inside the lock, you get some marks, like scratches on the key, that you can file down to make a key. So if I go forward a little, you can see that the key is, is becoming a real key. It's not a blank anymore. You can see some teeth on it. Okay, so I will just go back a little. Yes. <laughs> so a few seconds, it should open. And this is a very, very good technique because from the spy point of view, you don't need to be at the lock every time. You just need a few seconds every time you, you, you take the impression. But you can come maybe like 10 seconds 20 times or 10 seconds 100 times. This is something that someone can do in a company, like a people that just walk down or a client that come to visit you every day. And just 10 seconds on one specific door, it jiggles the key and take it back. He will file it down in his place. And the next day he say, hey, this is me again. And just 10 seconds. And one day he will have a working key. And when it's working, it's completely working, like, like a real key. So no, yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for all the participants. Je vais le reprendre. Merci. 
So now we will analyze. It's okay. We will analyze those locks. So every lock has been uh, opened or tried to be opened with uh, one specific technique, and we will see that we can find uh, specific marks. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't open the. <laughs> So, how do we do forensic? Uh, mostly with a microscope, but this is not enough. You just, it's not enough to just take a look and look at it and say uh, what happens. You need to know your target. So let's say someone has a ABUS lock, for example, or it can be a Vachette, or it can be a GPM, or any brand. You need to know what are the flows of this specific brand, because some lock can be open with one technique, and some locks can be open with another technique, or most likely with another technique. <coughs> so if you want to focus and have a, a good analyze, you, you need to know this. So how to know the target? Uh, these are few places where you can find good knowledge about locks. Uh, Locksport, so it's a French forum. Uh, lock picking 101 is a US, I think, or English speaking at least. Uh, forum, and you have two very nice books. For example, uh, the first one is like 3,000 pages, uh, I believe, or between three and 4,000 pages. Uh, it's a good one. Um, and the second one is smaller, but it's uh, focused on high security locks, so you can have a very nice uh, information about those locks. It will, it won't give you techniques to open them, but it will give you a good information about how it works. So now, let's say the forensic for itself and see what is inside the locks that have been picked. So, uh, for the first one, So this is <laughs> be nice, be nice. So what can you tell? You can see that there you have a very big mark which has been caused by the shoulder of the key. Because the key has been hit many times, it makes this hole. The official key, the working key, is still working. If I take this key, uh, I just have to set it back the good way. Okay. If I take the official key, it still works. So if you come back to this lock with your key, you put your key in and you say it's working. So you won't have the idea that someone opened it. The first way is to see this mark. But this mark can also happen with old locks when they have been used many, many times. So another way is to take the lock apart. So I will do that. And yeah, th this is actually a key the job. I need I need this to do my job. Yeah. This is a game actually, like every hacking stuff. So if I take the pins that are inside, I, I should see marks on them. So I hope I will see them, unless this conference is useless. Okay. If we are, you know that. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support. The speech, not the Oh, okay. <laughs> the speech is fine. The conference is not so much. Okay. So I believe you can see it. Maybe just. No. Mm, not really better. Um, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but the shape of the pin is not 
Perfect. If I make a comparison with a, a brand new lock or brand new pin, You can see that this one is is clean, and the marks that you you got from the bump key you cannot get them from a regular key because you will never push your key that, that hard. So th this is very specific to bump keys. Um, did it turn to have multiple Yes, probably. Uh, when you you hit the key because the pin is round, it can turn on itself. Uh, and because you, even when you use your regular key, you put it in and out, it will make a slight rotation uh, on the pins. And that's why probably everything is fine. Uh, th that's why you have, you have multiple uh, indentation on it, yes. So you can, you can also say that it has not been opened with one hit. It, it required multiple, thank you. M multiple uh, heating, you cannot very easily tell that it has been opened. You can tell that it has been manipulated, but it's very, very hard to tell that it has been opened. Uh, we'll some techniques you can, some techniques you cannot. Uh, it's quite long to, to, to explain, but uh, it's very hard. Uh, now if I take uh, the one that has been opened with the electropic, So on this one, you cannot see much marks on the plug because this technique does not touch really the, the face of the plug. But when I will take apart the lock, we should see interesting things. Not too long. Yes. <laughs> So if I take it apart, Uh, wait a second. Okay. So you, I believe you can see it. There is a, there are a lot of scratches uh, on the pin. And I have to check. No, maybe on, not on this one, but actually, the the tool. Wait a second, yeah. The tool is touching in places that the key cannot reach sometimes. So on this one, you cannot see it, but some pins can have scratches on the side of the pin. Hopefully we'll have it uh, on the picking one. We'll see that. Uh, so you can, you, if you find scratches in a place that the key does not touch, it means that some tool touch, touched it. So now, so th th these marks, very heavy marks and a lot of them, uh, it's quite specific to Electropic. It's not the only one, but this is quite specific. Uh, this one is the one that has been uh, picked with the mechanical pick. So we'll see what is inside. So I just hope this is a side that has been uh, manipulated, but if we don't see anything, we will see the other side.
this. Um, yes. So on this one, it's the same. You have marks. You have quite similar marks, but uh, a lot few marks because this one, you need to click it yourself. So it's very long to do a lot of uh, hitting. In comparison with this one, you have hundreds and thousands of uh, hitting uh, in a minute or in, in a few minutes. So you, you have uh, interesting marks on this one too. And the last one, so I believe this is this one, but I really don't know which part has been picked. Should be this one because we see small scratches. Yes, you can see scratches, and actually, we can also tell that. Where is it? We can tell that it has been raked, and not single pin picked. You have two techniques, basically one with uh, like something called like a five mountain. Uh, because it looks like, and you can also use uh, a filler, which is like a, a single finger, which pushed on the pins, and it will leave different marks on the pin. So in a few minutes, you saw different marks left by different tools. Uh, it's pretty basic, but as you can tell, all the locks, uh, they are not working anymore, obviously, but they were working, uh, after the, the attack. So, there are a few anti forensic techniques, uh, anyway, um, which you cannot detect so easily. And the first one, it's very, very basic it's key duplication. If you have a duplicate key, you cannot tell in the lock that you have a duplicate key. We'll see what we can do about that. You can also decode the lock somehow. We'll see different way. And you can also do something that I call uh, lock recording. We'll see wh what it is. So you can, if you duplicate a key, maybe some of you never saw how a key is duplicated if you go to a locksmith. So this is a cheap machine, but uh, it's working. It's uh, in my garage, so it's not uh, very uh, clean place, but so you have the key and you have the blank, and you can see that this key has not been cut already. On the left part, you have uh, a filler which is uh, uh, not a moving part, and on the right, you have the cutter which is moving, which is turning to cut the key. So you just put the two keys the original and the blank one, and the machine just does the job by, by itself. You can see it's uh, automatic on this one. You have a very nice uh, high-level system. <laughs> it's, it's working pretty, pretty good, actually. And when you, you go to the end of the key, the key is duplicated. Uh, on this one, uh, because the cutter is not very, very good quality, I, I run two times to make sure that the key uh, is working. And you will see the key working. So it's just basic uh, copying. This is important because you will see that we can find that a key has been duplicated. You cannot find in the lock that a duplicated key has been used, but you can sometimes find that a key has been used to make a duplicate. So now you just see that the duplicate is working. This is basic, but this is functional. You can also duplicate a key like James Bond. Uh, it's working very good. This is a quite high security key. You have 10 pin. Actually, you have five of them. And inside each of them, you have a smaller pin. So it's 
it's hard to duplicate key. You cannot just use a regular machine to, to do it, but you can make a mold and use low temperature uh, metal uh, to, to make the duplicate. You can also make a duplicate just with some plastic. Uh, I didn't do it there, but uh, you can actually take a credit card or any kind of uh, thin plastic and a cutter and just duplicate the shape of the key. And the key won't be uh, strong enough to uh, act the mechanism, but it will be uh, strong enough to make the combination. And you just need a tensioner, a small piece of metal to put inside the lock and make the, the, the tension so you, you have enough strength to do it. You can also use uh, 3D printing. Maybe a few of you saw my uh, presentation at uh, Nuit du Hack about 3D printing. Uh, you can duplicate almost any key. I made uh, a series of uh, software where you, you, you just write down the, the name of the key and the combination and it will give you a, a nice STL uh, of the key. Uh, any high, high security key can also be done. Uh, not, not too easy, but uh, it can be done by criminals too, of course. The lock decoding is a way to find the combination of the lock with another technique. Uh, you can just duplicate a key from a picture. Maybe you saw some picture on Twitter about the TSA and RATP uh, keys, uh, which probably can duplicate it, I think. Um, you can also manipulate some locks without any tools. Uh, for example, safe locks, some of them you can, like in the movies, uh, you don't have to hear what is inside, actually. This is a movie part. Uh, you just have to feel something in the, in the lock. Uh, it's not click, 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 clack, uh, neither, but something like that. And it won't leave any marks, uh, except your fingerprints, maybe, but no, no forensic mark of opening. You can also use uh, X-rays, um, infrared, or some techniques and Doppler attacks, like, you know, any high-level technique that won't uh, act directly with a with a lock uh, can work. Uh, it does exist, it's not very easy to use, but it's, uh, it's doable. And the last one is one uh, that I, I like, is the right amplification on a master key system. So a master key system is, for example, uh, in a hotel. You have the key for your room. You cannot open the room uh, of your neighbor. But if you take your lock apart, you can make the master key that will open all the door. And if you do that, and you open one door, you steal something, maybe? Uh, if this, uh, this guy say, uh, I've been robbed, uh, someone picked my, my lock or did something with my lock, if you analyze this lock, you cannot tell that it has been opened by a master key because this is just a regular key. You need to analyze all the locks. So it can be a lot of work. Uh, if you have like 1,000 locks in the same master key system. But it can be done, but it's very difficult. So that's why I think it's... a uh, um, anti-forensic technique. And lock recording is actually uh, the most basic technique after the key duplication. You come somewhere, you break the lock, so you can open. Uh, of course, uh, it's a forensic, uh, uh, how do you say that? You, you can see it forensically uh, because it's broken, but you break it, you take it apart in your workshop, you make a new key, and you build a new lock. You just buy parts, or you take new new lock apart, like I did, and you build a new lock exactly the same, you put it back together, you put it on its place. And there won't be any lock picking, uh, forensic traces, any bumping, any, anything. The only thing that you can tell is that it's strange that this lock is brand new in uh, maybe a 10 year old uh, place. But you can find some way to, 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 to make it look old maybe or something. So how to protect against these uh, anti-forensic techniques? The first one, which is the most common key duplication, it will actually leave marks, but on the key that has been duplicated. So you won't see it well on, on this picture. I will try to show you uh, on the magnifier. I duplicate one of those three keys yesterday. Yeah, this one. So.
I'm not sure that you can see it well, but th this part is uh, the thickness of the of the blade. In this place, actually, on the wall blade, you you have a long scratch because the key is used in the lock. Every time you put it in the lock, the pin will make uh, small scratches all the way down the blade. But one place that is never touched by uh, by the pins is the place between the shoulder of the key and the first pin. The first pin will just go in there. So this is, uh, I don't know if you can see it well. Yeah, maybe this is better. Yeah. This is the first cut in the key, so the first pin will go to there, but it won't go further. And if you look carefully on this place, you can see that this part has been scratched. And actually it has been scratched by the machine, the uh, duplicating machine itself. So this is not always easy to see it, but this is very specific. If you have this on a key, it means that this key has been used to make a duplicate. And this is especially interesting on key, on key that cannot be duplicated, because this key is a regular one, so you go to a locksmith, you ask for duplicate, and it can be done, no problem. Uh, you have some keys that the blank do not exist, so there is no point to duplicate them, except if you made yourself a blank, maybe with plastic, maybe uh, in a soft metal or in some way. Uh, so if you see a duplication mark on this key, it means that someone tried to do something that is uh, technically complicated and uh, that is uh, illegal. So you, you know that this key has been duplicated for illegal uh, intention. How to protect yourself? This is very basic, but uh, the basic is the most important. In security, you know that uh, you need to have good password, you, you need to not give your password to, to other people. Uh, speaking of which, it's the same for a key. Um, when you have a key, if you give it to someone, let's say for one day, and he gives you uh, the key back, don't think that he, he has uh, given you everything. He has the knowledge, he has one day, to do something with the key. Uh, when you have uh, a password, I, I'm sure that none of you uh, write the password on a paper, give it to a friend, and at the end of the day say, hey, give it back the paper. I don't want you to have my, my, my password. And this is exactly the same uh, with the key. The key is only two information. The first one is the shape of the keyhole. So just a picture of the lock actually will give it to you or the brand will give it to you. And the other information is the shape or the combination. But the combination can be uh, simplified uh, in five numbers, which is uh, the depth uh, of the cut. So if you give me a key, for example, I need like 30 seconds to, to make a duplicate in my head. I will make the actual duplicate maybe later, but this is enough. And this is enough also for criminals, of course. So if you give a key to someone, don't expect that when he gave it to you back, it's okay. That's why, th this is the last point actually, it's hide your keys. It's like a password. You, you cannot uh, uh, lend it for, for a time. It's like a password. If you give a key to someone and you don't trust these people, when he gives you back the key, you have to change the lock itself. You should. Like, like you would change the password if you gave it to, to someone. So also the first one is use how to duplicate keys. Uh, it's obvious, but uh, if the key can be duplicated to any locksmith place, uh, of course someone will be tempted to do it. If you have a very complicated key uh, with a magnet or maybe with a moving part or just a patented key, uh, if someone tries to copy it, it will go to the locksmith and the locksmith say, I cannot do it. Maybe it's finished, so it's, it's a better security. It's not enough, but it's better. And also, know your stuff. You know probably more on computer than on locks, but you should also know locks, because this, this is personally the first way I, I would use. Uh, and this is what some criminal could do. So as a conclusion, just if you, have, uh, if you think that uh, 
uh, illegal opening occurred, just do forensic. You could be surprised. You can find something. Don't, don't just put a, a drill uh, in the lock and call the insurance company. Just ask your question and analyze. And if you have question, uh, it could be today or another day about uh, analyzing a lock. You, you can call me or send me an email. Uh, I can tell you maybe it's possible to pick this lock or maybe not. So it can also uh, give you a way to, to, to think. So if you have question or suggestion or ideas or or tomatoes to <laughs> thank you very much that was that was probably the greatest microscope conference I've ever seen at Hakito <laughs> thank you right yeah. it was awesome great talk great talk thank you very much so any questions for <laughs> you don't get a question <laughs> you were late to the I talk. Can I can you were late to the talk, you don't get a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here my zero question. Um, you said something about Doppler attack. What, what is it? You didn't explain it. Which one? Doppler attacks. Doppler, uh, Doppler is a um, uh, medical technique to, you know, uh, if your bones are broken, it's like x ray or it's uh, just a different technique to, you know, or if you are pregnant, maybe not you, but. Uh, uh, it's a uh, ultrasound. It's one, yeah, it's one one of the medical techniques yeah, it's to, the to, see, uh, to see through uh, materials. It's also used uh, in technical stuff, uh, automotive, and so. On. Yeah, one question on the right also. Yes. Yeah, um, can you do for forensic on a lock without breaking it? Like we saw uh, in the first case with the, I think it was the little hammer or something like that. You, yes. you will see from the front of the lock. Yes. But so, sometimes, yes. Uh, it's like, uh, can you do some forensic uh, with a computer without touching it? Sometimes, yes, if you can see uh, a key logger on it, but sometimes you cannot. Uh. Yes. Yeah, this is a very interesting uh, question and interesting concept. In uh, Computer forensic, you have, uh, I think it's a chain of custody uh, problem. We have the same in, uh, in locks, but uh, you make a, a perfect duplicate of hard drive before you analyze it. Unfortunately, in locks, it cannot be done because you, you should make a, a perfect duplicate even with the cr scratches, which you cannot do. So unfortunately, you cannot do that. Uh, it's, it's a problem. That's why we document uh, a lot what, what, what we do. For example, when I do a forensic on this cylinder, I will take like 150 pictures at least uh, and uh, at every step. So I make sure that even if I do a mistake, if someone else that can do the forensic, he can see, yeah, you didn't tell that there were such scratches there, uh, but I can see it on your picture, but this is the best we can do, unfortunately. A question, maybe? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And just one last word. I want to thank you, the four volunteers. I have a few gifts for you, so if you want to come back there. <laughs>